So here we have Anseris moniously dumped on its side, a mallard. It's a reasonably old model. It is the trusty Hornby railroad DCC fitted from the factory. And I was able to pick up a TTS decoder for it, uh, thanks to Amazon Prime Day. Uh, so this was only £30, which obviously, it's a £30 sound decoder. It's going to sound like a £30 sound decoder. But there's not very much in the box. Decoder, speaker, there may be some screws, there may not. There is a very folded up manual. Decoder manual. And then how to fit it. So the nice thing with Thornby, basically since they released uh, TTS chips, any model released after it is supposed to fit a TTS chip. And certainly in the manual that came with it, it does say DCC ready, DCC fitted, signed. And when you open it up, it does show a little sound decoder. So, uh, simple model, take one big screw out that releases the tie bar and the little connector socket to release the body. It's a slightly confusing one because there's two screws there. Don't need to touch them. Instead, you have to take the coupling out of its little pocket there and down the big deep hole, and it is quite deep. There's yet another screw. This is where it gets a little confusing. Because you have to remember which way is the front of the model. So it does show it should pull down and slide back. So chassis comes down and very carefully it doesn't come back. What it actually needs to do is the body needs to come back because you can see the clips there. So obviously pulling the, the chassis back just pulls it harder onto that clip. So a little uh, whoopsie. Anyway, decoder socket, decoder. Uh, I'm presuming pin one is marked on the board. Yes, it is just in there. Same on the chip. So we will remove that one and embed it in there. We'll open this, which is going to be a nightmare. Pretty much. And two little screws in a tiny bag. Little speaker with a sort of two part mount. And obviously decoder chip. So looking at that there's two screws on the top. They line up with that. There's obviously a slight curved recess. So logic would dictate if we carefully remove these. And then hmm. 
it doesn't seem to want to fit in like that. What I actually think is we don't need that little spacer. Good job, it's now on the floor. Excellent. In case anyone's wondering, gravity is still on. Do not panic. Oh, that is neat. And then we can align the decoder. Once again, number one, number one. Line up all the pins. Something like that would do. We want there's pretty much loads of space, so definitely space for different speakers. And that will be good. Sure, I had to. Take that in, make sure it is within the chassis and not. Outside it, holds it down, stops it hopefully rattling around too much. Once again, remember which way this goes. So, again, hook that in and push in the opposite direction to what it says. Realigns, drop that down there, put this in the correct way up, I've done that before. It's one of those things you never really think about when it's the wrong way up. Secure the, the drawbar. It has a tiny little washer as well. Those are quite nice, they're a, a shouldered bolt so that whenever it's tight down the, uh, the actual bar is still loose. But just when you tighten it back obviously you need to make sure that you don't nip the side of the, the hook with the shoulder. But that gets it there. Right, so we'll take it up and see what it sounds like. So. Oh. There it is, uh, unceremoniously on the layout, and it's only quite loud.
That's apparently them sizzling breakfast, which must be a hell of an egg. But if we put the actual sound on. That didn't sound too clever. Hmm. The track hasn't been used for a while. Using with all the pickups, still find a dead spot. 